Okay. Well, here we are. Another week of indoor arena football has come and gone. I'll say that. Isn't that great? Crazy stuff we got to witness this weekend. Um, the Bay Area San Diego game literally just ended not even two seconds ago. Um, you know, the strike force at Bay Area fought in a hard fought game. Really hard fought game, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, ultimately, Bay Area gets the win 54 51 in that one. The other games throughout the. Throughout the, throughout the IFL, we'll talk about in a moment. But, you know, in the NAL first. Let's talk the NAL first because that's who I have listed first. So the week four scores, obviously, Fayetteville beat up on West Texas 50-18. West Texas at least has the right nets. Um, there's some other problems, though, that have been occurring. Um, Apparently, Lee Curtis like sold the team. He's back with the team now, but he's not owning the team in any capacity. Um, if you looked at the transactions page, uh, West Texas needed an offensive lineman. They were supposed to get Justin Arf, couldn't get him, so they got, you know, they released him. Got an O lineman. Um, there is the thing with Amarillo. There's also, I didn't list this on here, but there's something with Charlotte as well. Um, unfortunately, the person who got the source, you know, the, the indoor football insiders page, that page, which has just been, it's just been a mess in and of its own. Um, you know, along with a couple of other pages that try to be legit beyond the walls. Not not inside the walls, not not the boys that do the NAL. I'm talking beyond the walls. I think you know who runs that page. Um, yeah, that, that page there, you know, definitely some scathing type rapper coming from those two pages in particular. And then the other two games that happened this afternoon, Orlando beat Jacksonville, very surprising there. Um, you know, Connor Blunt got hurt. But Jacksonville, so they had to go with the backup who did a real good job. But ultimately, in the end, the Predators got their first win, which is insane to me. And then the Empire, they lost to Carolina. Didn't, didn't see that one coming. Didn't see that one coming. Uh, I know Carolina invited Antonio Brown to their game. There was a whole press release and everything. He didn't really – wasn't really much to say about it because, I mean, again – it wasn't much to say about it. it. It it happened, and that was it. Like again, this is what this is what I was talking about with those other pages. Those other pages that tried to cover the sport. They got real, real mad about this. Um, it is what it is. If Carolina could do what they wish with, you know, inviting Antonio Brown to the game, it is what it is. I don't even know if he showed up. I don't, like nobody really said anything about it. But it happened. It happened, and now we're at a weird little crossroads here in the NAL where it's like you have the Empire or one and two, you know, San Antonio, who's, by the way, just a plus four as far as, you know, you know, point differential is concerned. But, uh, yeah, they, 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 they're three and out in West Texas. Is 0-3 as expected. They improved their broadcast very much so. They have the right nets now. Like the nets actually look like the nets, not like Carolina's cheap nets. I mean, those nets look cheap. You know, like the nets look the correct color. I criticized that and they got that fixed real quick. So in the IFL, I don't have much to say this week because there wasn't there's not a lot to say. Like the Barnstormers are 0-5. Tulsa has a little heart. You know, they can't do what they did last night against the Arizona Rattlers, which is make a dump, uh, make a dump decision, which allowed Arizona to get to three and three. And thus Tulsa fell to what, one and four. Um, yeah, not much else to say, you know, about that. Again, the West, crazy. The East goes through Frisco and Quad City 
and maybe Mass, Sioux Falls, Green Bay, that next tier right now. CIF, it's 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 bad. It's bad. They they the the entire coaching staff I learned later for Topeka got fired. So the CIF concluded their investigation of Topeka and said yeah, we didn't find anything. We didn't. We didn't find any wrongdoing. There was nothing wrong here, despite the fact that there have been multiple videos. I've seen the videos, and I got to tell you, again, all of it is wrong. Ugh, you know, it's the same stuff we see year in and year out. But you know, if Topeka, again, if they folded earlier in the off season, you know, they said they weren't going to come back. And you come back and it deteriorates into this, then maybe, maybe you shouldn't have just came back in the first place. Um, it's also Travis Salter's uniform, number 46 for Billings. That uniform got retired. Oh, I'm not sure the context, but um, out of respect, Titus retired that uniform. That's like the only other thing, and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, Omaha still undefeated. Gillette six and one. You know, still surprising. A a really good Gillette Mustangs team, and then the rest of the league, as you can see, Rapid City and Topeka are both zero and seven. Are both teams going to get a win? Because again, you know, now it's crunch time. Billings and Southwest Kansas are going to be the last two teams that might lack up. In fact, Bill, you could probably say Billings is clinched, but again, you could probably say Billings is clinched. Maybe Southwest Kansas is clinched, but again, we'll wait another week. We'll wait another week on that. I really feel like our top six are set in stone. It's just, you know, it's looking like Omaha and Gillette are going to be the ones with first round buys and Sioux City and Salina are going to, you know, host the first round. Remember, that's June 3rd, June 10th, and June 17th or 18th for the CIF. So the CIF championship will be June 17th to June 18th. I'll be watching that game intensely. So the others, so the everybody else, um, AL2. Well, Steel City, United Firepower, that live stream was a thing that happened. Um, the final score was listed at the bottom of the screen. So Steel City beat United Firepower 25-23. AWFC, I saw that stream, you know, that Wenachi stream very late. So like, I, like I was just scrolling across YouTube late at night. It was like... 10 30 11 o'clock after the ifl games at the nal games at the cif games after those games had concluded wenachi easily beat up on the spokane Wolfpack, a another semi-pro team that's not part of any indoor arena league beat him up 89 to 12 and then the great lakes arena alliance or whatever you want to call it because they don't even know what their name is it's like they call it themselves the great great lakes arena football like that glaa logo doesn't even fit anymore but the playoffs are apparently set for this league and i i, I just want to say like there were supposed to be games in may west michigan said the playoffs were going to be in june and now we have the playoffs set for May 6th with Southern Michigan, Battle Creek, and then Ohio, Western Michigan, which, I mean, based uh, based off of who's who, um, West Michigan's obviously going to take care of business against the Blitz. They're going to take care of business there. And then Battle Creek, the only other team that's legit, the only other team that gave West Michigan a fight, is probably going to take care of business in Southern Michigan. Either or, you know, Southern Michigan can play as well. What what's going on in the AIFA? Well, not much really. It's just a couple schedule changes, really, that all I can find. Um, and again, the only two teams that are legit in this league are the Mississippi Raiders and the Columbus Lions. All the others, trash, fake. 
Alton Walker is probably scamming, you know, or something along those lines, because Capital City has been the team that's been replaced in multiple games. I had to go back and look, like, hang on, who are the Texas Phantoms? I had to go back and look at, you know, a video at the video from three weeks ago to find out, you know, what in the world happened here. And it turns out Mississippi replaced that Capital City game with the Texas Phantoms. And then Columbus said, Mississippi, y'all are coming to our place on July 15th. And that also replaces the Capital City game, which leads me to start to believe that the Capital City Cyclones will not be playing this year. And they usually don't even play that many games in the first place. Um, they're still up in the air whether they're going to play the Idaho Horsemen or not. I hope they, I hope that they do. I hope that they say, hey, we exist and we are playing a game this year. But otherwise, I've got nothing on the AIFA right now because, you know, there's only two teams in the league that are legitimate. The others, you know, the South Florida Thunder, come on, the Carolina Predators, they're actually trash, like actual trash. They lost to an EIF team. <laughs> like, come on. Um, and then the others, like the Dallas Falcons, they actually lost to an exhibition game. To an outdoor team. They actually lost. I didn't put that in here. But they lost an exhibition game to an outdoor team. And that's basically it. Like, other teams in the AIFA, you know, the Las Vegas Kings, sure, they could travel. But, I mean, they're more fit for the West Coast anyway. They're more fit for the AWFC. They just need some more talent. Um, I, know they're, I know they are they have a real list as, like, Las Vegas Sports Park or whatever. But they're not going to play no home games. Stop it. Um, the AIFA is very disorganized. Like, how are you worse than the AAL2? How? How can you be this bad? Like, the AAL took, like, two years off. They've been coming back on fire. Literally. It doesn't make any sense. Thankfully, you have the AAL2. But thankfully, there's not a lot to say else this week. So I'll come back to you next week, the day before my birthday. Take care. See you tomorrow. Let's talk some lacrosse.